Hi, this is Charlie from A Few Days After Finishing Filming This Video, here to do an intro, because there is no intro, because this was supposed to be one long video and it ended up being so incredibly long that I had to cut it into two videos. You got all that? Yeah, so my lacing exploration started with grommets slash eyelets. That video came out last week. And I ended up going into quite a bit of detail on the first six cuffs, so we stopped there. This week we are looking at 16 more lacing options. No hammers, crocodiles, or grommet presses required. If you're a little lost as to what is going on, I do recommend watching part one, but if grommets make you wanna hurl, then it's okay, skip it. Also shield your eyes, because here's a quick reminder of the first six lacing options, and then we will go get started with part two. All right, and we are back. Let's see how many of these I can get through today before I inevitably leave and make cake. So we're done with grommets, with, you know, all of the traditional punching them in kind of grommets, but we are actually not done with eyelets because now hand sewn eyelets. They're so traditional. I've never done them on a garment. I do think I made one Back in the day when I was doing like an embroidery sampler, I was sewing through an entire book of stitches and I recall one of them being like an eyelet stitch. For this, I am pretty sure you're definitely supposed to have an awl. I still don't have one. So I am once again gonna use some super pokey snips. But yeah, from what I've seen, you're supposed to try to not actually break any of the fibers of your fabric, but just push them apart. <laughs> we'll see if that works. I have marked where I want my eyelets to be. And now I'm just stabbing my scissors on that mark and trying to get the threads to move away from each other. Oh, that's not bad. I only broke a couple fibers. Now that I have the little hole, I'm gonna use a pencil to make it bigger. I'd recommend getting an all though if you plan on doing this a lot. It'd be a lot easier than this. And I'm gonna sew my eyelets with embroidery floss because one, that seems way faster. <laughs> and two, Pretty colors. So you're really just whip stitching around. And while I whip stitch those eyelets, here's a quick word from today's partner. This portion of today's video has been made in partnership with Foreo Sweden. Let's be honest, I love a good face massage, but you are not gonna find me at a spa more than like, once every five years, and Matt is just not the best face masseuse around. He has other talents. So I was pretty excited to try out Foreo's Luna 4. It's my favorite color too. The Luna 4 is a two-in-one smart facial cleansing and firming device, which is a fancy way to say you can clean your face with it, and you can give yourself a delightful face and neck massage. I jumped right in with that massaging option because it is a great way to relax before bed, something I struggle to do on any given day. Foreo's app pairs with your device, so you can select what style of massage you prefer, I tried them all, and how strong you want those vibrations. I particularly loved the reflexology massage, which I was prompted to use in front of my ears and between my eyebrows. Ugh, y'all, it felt so good. I found it was also really easy to hold on to the Luna 4, and I could alter the position on my face to get a better connection with points like up there between the eyebrows. The cleansing option is also lovely because you get that texture from the silicone bristles, which are bacteria resistant, I might add, plus the gentle vibrations and the foaming cleanser. It is a tactile delight, and my skin felt so fresh and smooth afterward. Best of all, it only took a couple minutes, so I can have cleaner, healthier skin without having to go get a professional facial 
or interrupt my up and out the door as fast as possible morning routine. Forio's products are rarely on sale, but the first 100 people to click the link in my description will get 21% off their own Luna 4. So if that sounds like a delight to you, start clicking. Thank you so much to Forio for partnering with me on this portion of today's video, and let's go check on those eyelets. We're back, and I've stitched one eyelet. Yeah, okay. I enjoy that. I think I could definitely make it a little more even. You could probably draw a circle on there first, like around your hole, so that you get all of your stitches like perfectly even around, but that's a fun look, especially in bright colors. We're moving on to another land of no special equipment really needed. I mean, sewing machine, but we already have that. Buttonholes. Technically it could work, right? It's a hole. You can put a cord through it. You don't see it much, and maybe there's a reason for that, but I figured let's give it a go. And since we just did hand sewing, I'm gonna do buttonholes on the machine. I have made buttonholes so rarely, every time I do, I forget how to do it. Okay, here we go. I forgot to push the lever back. I mean, I literally just said. Can't remember how to make a buttonhole. So did we expect anything different now? Pushing the lever back. Trying again. We have a buttonhole. I'm gonna make a whole bunch more. Okay, so we're staying in what is technically an eyelet realm, because apparently this is called webbing eyelets. We're gonna do several versions of this, and if you're trying to avoid the whole grommet thing just all together, these are great options. They're like the little loops that stick out from the side and can be laced up. Uh, for starters, you can just use fabric. You can use whatever fabric you were already using. So I am just gonna cut out a strip on the bias because I'm gonna start with the tube method. How much do I need? I don't really know. And you're basically constructing this exactly like you would make a strap. You're just sewing your fabric into a tube. Oh, it helps if you take it off the buttonhole setting first. Then you of course have to turn that right side out. Always a blast. Okay, iron it and all that stuff. And then you can just snip it into smaller pieces that are the exact size you want your loop to be, making sure you have enough left over to fit your seam over it. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. And then of course I have not pre-constructed my cuff this time because adding the loops is part of the construction as a whole. So I'm just gonna fold each loop in half and then pin it on to what will be the front of the cuff, like so. Sandwich it together and sew it down. And when you turn it right side out, you should have loops sticking out from your cuff or whatever it is you're making, like so. But perhaps you do not feel like turning tiny tubes right side out, so like with the grommets, I'm going to test basically the same thing done a slightly different way. You can always do the make your own bias tape method. Basically, you're just folding your strip of fabric into fourths and ironing it like that so the two raw edges are tucked away into the center. And then you can stitch over the open edge, or quite honestly, I've done this before and left it totally open and it was fine. After that is the exact same construction. You're just pinning them onto your or whatever you're making on the right side, sandwiching it, sewing it, turning it right side out. Not sure why I placed those so low on the cuff, but you get the idea. Next up in the webbing eyelet world, maybe you don't even feel like making your own bias tape at all. Guess what, you can buy it. <laughs> Ah, that was loud. So yeah, if you like the pre-made bias tape, grab some, cut it into chunks, you can sew down it again, or you can skip that, totally up to you, and do the exact same thing. We get the point, right? Let's skip right to the finished thing. Maybe I can place them a little bit better this time. <laughs> you know what? I'm not gonna sew down these, and people will be like, 
oh my god, you didn't sew it closed. And I'll be like, so what? Was that a good story? All right, last two webbing eyelet options. Ribbon. There's probably also like trim that you can use if you find one that's solid enough and thin enough and strong enough, but ribbon is a great option. I'm gonna do two of these. I just really wanted to see the difference between like a really thin ribbon and then a thicker ribbon. So we're doing two. Once again, it is the same process. We're all good on that, yes. These are gonna be hard to pin down. Are we halfway through yet? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're over halfway through. We are moving on from webbing eyelets, but I do still have another ribbon exploration. Um, but please hold because I'm gonna go make a cake and then hopefully I'll be back to do that before the end of the night. Uh, Y'all, it turned out so beautifully, but also I just got five billion mosquito bites while taking pictures of it outside. Why? Worth it. It's also very delicious. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. Let's do one more uh, lacing method. Yes, that is what we're doing. Lacing method before I quit for the night. Is my face like totally in shadow? I still need one more light in this room right in the center to do this light, but I'm looking for a really cute fixture and I haven't found one yet. Okay, so this one doesn't really have a name. It was <laughs> kind of the most exciting thing I found while doing research and it was just a picture on Pinterest. Now the caption says that it is originally from the blog Festive Attire, which was run by Jen Thompson. I checked the blog. She hasn't posted on there since 2018, so I assume that phase is over, but According to the digging around that I did and a Reddit post that I found, the original picture is not even on the blog anymore. So I don't know what's up with that, but all credit goes to Jennifer Thompson for this lovely idea. You take a ribbon and on the back side of your piece, you'll wanna do this before fully constructing it so that your stitching doesn't go all the way through. You sew it on to the edge, sew down one side and then cut across and sew back up the other side and leave a little gap. Sew another box, leave another gap and so on all the way down. And the gaps are your loops, but they're hidden entirely inside whatever the garment is. So when you string stuff through them, you're just gonna have a lacing cord that disappears inside the garment and reappears again. Totally hidden lacing. Okay, let's try it. So theoretically, that's it. That's the front, nothing on it. That's our hidden lacing. Let's see how it works. Good morning all. Where were we? There's a lot of lickens happening. All right, so I mentioned trim on the last one, as in you can create a loop out of trim if you find just the right stuff. But now we are fully moving to the land of trims because why make a hole if you can just use one that already exists, right? For starters, eyelet tape. Uh, this is just twill tape that somebody else has already inserted the eyelets into, probably professionally. So theoretically, you could sew that into the side of a garment and you have holes. Let's try it. This is kind of big stuff. I probably would have been benefited by getting some smaller eyelet tape, considering that I am making rather small pieces. We will make it work. So I have pinned it on like so on the right side of my garment, and then I will sandwich it and sew right along that edge. So when we turn it right side out, it will be inside. Technically, you'd want to finish your edges, but you know, we're just trying things out. So next up we have satin 
D-ring tape, which is a phrase that I saw when I started looking up racing things. And then when I went to actually like buy some, I did find it, I found it in an Etsy shop, but it appears to be handmade. So technically you could just hand make this yourself. It's just some satin ribbon with D-rings that have been attached with little satin ribbon loops. I don't think you can buy this like pre-made from a manufacturer. So once again, I've got it pinned on, then I'm just gonna sandwich it and sew it together. Moving on, so the first thing that came to mind for me when I was thinking of like other ways to do lacing other than grommets was corset back lacing stuff, you know? Like the stuff you see on wedding dresses, which is probably because I have worked at three different David's Bridal's alteration departments. So I'm very familiar with this stuff. I did not realize that it's pretty much only used or found in the wedding dress area. I thought it was way more widespread and easier to find. But yeah, in order to find this kind of stuff, you basically have to look up corset lacing, wedding dress backing corset. Like you have to use the word corset in there and usually like bridal as well. I was hoping that you could just find trim that has the loops on it like this. Cause this has a piece of boning in it. And a lot of them also came with like the full insert thing for like completely adding a corset backing into a dress. Do I want to cut this up? I mean, I could, but I'm kind of afraid I'm going to ruin it. Also, now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, I could technically make this myself. This is the same as making those very first webbing eyelets I did, creating a tube, cutting it into pieces. It's just, instead of sewing it in, in a little loop like this, you're sewing it in a U shape. So instead of cutting this up, should I just do that? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I don't wanna cut this up. So we're back to turning tiny tubes of fabric right side out. Yay. And y'all, if anyone wants to just make trim, I would buy that. Okay, we're still in trim land. There's also this thing called hook and eye tape. So you just need the eye side, you don't need the hook side. And I found both of these spools at Remainders, the crafting thrift store. Presumably, you know, somebody lost the other side or they got separated at some point. So perfect. Now, obviously your holes here are pretty small. So you're only going to be able to lace this with something pretty small, but it's an option and it's strong and sturdy and easy to insert and it's already done for you. So let's give it a try. Technically I've already given this a try. One of my split side skirts, I used this. And finally to wrap up the trim world, I have three trims that are just like regular trims that just happen to have holes in them, kind of. These are technically buttonhole trims, I think. But theoretically, if you find a trim and it has loops or holes of some kind, you can use it for lacing, right? So yeah, this one here, I'm pretty sure is supposed to be like elastic buttonholes. So the little boop boop loops are elasticated. So this may not be the best choice because lacing it is going to pull against those elastic loops and stretch them, but we'll see how it looks. This pink stuff, oh, it's also elasticated. So this is also buttonhole trim, but instead of the U-shaped loops, we have teardrop loops. So I just wanted to try different stuff. And then finally, this here is literally just a random trim that I found that happens to be comprised of circles. Is this gonna be strong enough to hold up against lacing? We shall see. I kind of think no, if I sew it in from the actual edge here so that all of the loops are sticking out past the fabric. There's only a very small amount that's attaching it there. So that's a lot of strain to put on that tiny thing. But I might actually do two versions of this one because I could potentially also sew this in down the middle of the loop itself or down the middle of the circle itself. So only like half of the circle is sticking out. And then I just have little U-shaped loops on there. So yeah, I was just looking for various methods of having 
a loop that you did not have to construct in any way. So, fun exploration. Let's try it. My leg is dead. <laughs> I mean, of course I just photographed and filmed all of these at the same time, not after I finished each one. So I have been laying on my back with my leg in the air, just the one leg, for hours now. Also, it doesn't help that my automatic reaction to sticking my leg in the air is to intensely point my toe because, um, years of ballet. I think you could see my muscles shaking in those last few cuffs. Oh, you could see my muscles just going nuts. All right. Good times, y'all. This one though, with the periwinkle ribbon, I need to make another one and they can be like ankle cuffs or spats for little Bo Peep or something. They're so cute. I definitely was really loving all of these that have a bunch of small loops. So you get the really crisscrossy lacing. I like that look a lot. Plus it helps avoid what some of the bigger ones gave you like these. They would start to wrinkle up in between each of the, um, lacing points because they're just too far away. So it doesn't lay as flat. But overall, I really do enjoy the webbing eyelets too, like all versions of these. There's something very pleasing to me about the like very symmetrical tabs, I guess, sticking out with the lacing between them. I don't know, I really like that. So like the grommets was very much like, okay, grommets. I've seen lacing on grommets before, that's all good. But it was really cool to see all of these other versions. Ooh, you know which one I loved? I'm gonna have to invest in some more of these things because lacing them up was so delightful. I think I even got some footage of it, especially uh, around lacing all of these other ones up because you don't have to stick the thing through a hole. You can just hook, 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 hook. Lots of fun. And I really liked the look of this and even the, uh, the D-ring ones. I don't know, it was really fun, I liked it. So one thing that I did after taking the initial photographs of all of these and the film and everything is I strength tested all of them. And I did that by just taking a shoelace and stringing it under all of the lacing and then yanking on it really hard. And I'm not gonna bore you with every single one of them because honestly, pretty much all of them passed with flying colors. The only one that was technically a fail was the second round of grommets or eyelets. These are the ones that I put in with the crocodile, and I don't know if it's the crocodile or my use of the crocodile. maybe I was doing something wrong, or if it's just because they're so small. These are the smallest grommets that I used, but like full on one of them came out, a bunch of the other ones are loose and are pulling away from the fabric under them, like this, did not survive the test. Whereas like the ones that I hand inserted, most definitely did. Yeah, but everything else pretty much passed. Um, some of them like the eyelet tape got rather distorted from being yanked on. My hidden ribbon got a bit distorted, but overall on the hidden ribbon, I of course did this very messily. I mean, y'all, I did the whole thing very messily. None of this was like even and carefully applied or carefully sewn. So obviously we're just testing things. But if I were to do the hidden ribbon thing again, one, I would use a ribbon that matches your fabric so you don't see this bright color from the outside. But also I would move it slightly more inside the edge here so that I had room to top stitch. And I would use both a thinner ribbon and just sort of a sturdier ribbon. This is a really weird piece of ribbon. The buttonholes 
distorted a bit, but not nearly as much as I thought they would. And then the hand sewn eyelets. Y'all, I should learn to trust in hand sewing more. I thought these were going to distort hugely, if not just like rip and no like nothing at all on these. They look perfectly fine. And then the elastic buttonholes on both of them, basically what the yanking on it did was it stretched out the very highest loop on the end that was getting the most pressure put on it. But I was genuinely surprised that all of the rest of these held, like nothing broke and the rest of them didn't even distort. So these elastic buttonhole loops are way stronger than I assumed. And then even just this regular old trim that I did the two versions of, the one with the full circles sticking out, definitely like looked like it was a lot closer to breaking, but it still didn't. And then the one that I did halfway sewn in, it's like perfectly fine. All that to say, <laughs> this was really just something that I wanted to learn. There's some things that I like to learn as I go and as I make a project. And then there are other things that I'm like, I really just wanna sit down and test all of that. And that's why I do these exploration videos because I just want a reason to sit down and test all of them. But I figure if I'm learning something, you might as well learn something with me. So hopefully this video has been helpful if you are trying to figure out ways to lace things up. I hope I've been of help to you. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you had fun. I had a lot of fun. Does anyone need some ankle cuffs? I have a lot. I did actually have a reason for wanting to test all of this now. There is some lacing in some projects in the near future. Okay, bye!